Good morning everybody, Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today we are going to talk about supports in War of the Visions. Now I know I'm loading into my like guild battles fight for the day, I don't know how this is going to go by the way, I think I'm fighting an all lightning missile team, but I want to highlight my Halloween little Leela in this comp, and then I want to talk about just supports in the game in general right now. I'm going to go over all the true supports, and I'm going to rank them from best to worst. I'm just going to talk about a uh, role in the game that I think has become a lot more interesting recently. Even though supports have always been viable, running team comps like the one you see I'm running on the screen here where I have a dedicated tank and then I have Halloween Little Leela here to kind of like keep her alive while providing some nice extra backup damage. Um, this kind of comp has always been viable, but right now in War of the Visions, two DPS and a support. Heck, even if that support is off element, all of these things are more viable now than I feel like they've ever been before. So I feel like it's a decent time to do a little tier list video for our support units in the game. Now, my little Leela, one thing you just saw right there, it, with Little Leela, one of her best things about being a support unit is the extra thing she brings to your team is that really high level of damage. You just saw her drop 9,000 damage on the enemy Frederica, immediately making this fight a 2v3 in my favor. That worked out really well considering I'm making a video about support, so my support showing off is very nice. And one thing I'm going to consider when doing the rest of this video is what secondary thing can these supports bring to the team and I think that is more important now than ever, right? You need your support to do more than just healing, especially when you're fighting teams like this that just do uh, so much potential damage that, uh, you know, I just need help. So let's watch this fight play out. I'm getting distracted. I, I want to watch fight. I want to get my stars today. Will Leela heal right here or will she go for the damage? Sometimes Leela gets greedy for those kills. If you got, you guys have seen little Leela before, you know that she gets greedy from time to time. She's going to let my actual DPS unit go kill people. That was a smart choice. And I think Joom, no, I don't have any of Joom's long range abilities on. So Joom's going to let little Leela finish this fight off if she wants to, or little Leela will choose to heal. There we go. Leela goes for blood, finishes off the Nivlu, and my team's looking pretty good. And with my Joom at just about 50% HP, my Leela will probably start the next fight off by healing Joom back up to full, and I'm looking really good. So there was little Leela in action. You got to see some damage and healing, and spoiler alert, I'm going to rank her high on the list. So let's jump to the list now and start talking about the supports. All right, now here I am with the list of supports that I've picked here to rank. And when I was making the cut, when I was taking picking units to put on this list and units to keep off, what I thought about was, I want units whose main role in your group is a support. So I left off units like Fryevia, who is a tank in the first place and then has supporting skills to back her up. There's a lot of units in this game with like Subjob Arithmetician or Subjob Time Mage who can like shoot arrows and quicken. I'm not counting them as supports. I'm going for those main job supports, and then uh, that's what I made this list from. I also stuck mostly to URs with a bit of an MR exception for Phoenix. I really want to talk about the strongest ones in the game, and uh, for some reason when I zoomed in, their head shrunk, so they're really small pictures. I don't know. Okay, alphabetical order is how we're going down this list, which means Aerith is first. I'm going to slot Aerith into the B tier here. Now, I think Aerith is good, if especially if you're running a mono water team. I think she's super usable, and she's really good into magic teams. If you're not in mono water or magic, I do think she falls off a little bit. If we go look at Aerith's kit, let's check it out. Um, you'll see straight away that like in her main job, she has an AOE heal that buffs spirit. That's already a tip in to her, you know, how good she is against magic teams. She has an AOE magic damage shield for her team. It's only 35%, not 50, but that's still very, very nice. And it casts in a nice square based AOE. So I think Aerith is particularly good against magic teams. Now she does have another heal with her, um, limit break that also increases defense, but it's only one use, um, um, it is her long range heal and a, a weakness of Aerith, something that kept her from moving up to A, was if you want heals from a safe distance, you're kind of looking at the limit break and then sort of what else? Like the rest of her healing is very short range, so she can get herself into trouble. Now, something else I'll say that's a feather in Aerith's cap is she has re-raise. 
I very much like re-raise on my support main units because even if they have access to full life, full life is uh, something you do after somebody's dead, you have to move into range, and then you might die while you're casting it. Re-raise, if you know who you want to be having aggro or you know who you don't want to get sniped, you can give them re-raise and then you've proactively kept them alive. I really like re-raise. So Aerith's strength re-raise against magic and mono water. Her weakness is her limited range for her healing. The secondary thing that Aerith brings to a fight is damage. A lot of it is through Ray of the Ancients, or she can bring you Time Mage support as well. Something I think that is slept on with Aerith is I think a lot of people realize how good she is with that like magic shield, um, and again, against anti-magic teams, but you can also use her for like cheesy quicken teams or to apply some single target haste to your group. So that's strong as well pretty good unit i'm gonna put her into b tier and don't think that b tier is bad right i'm gonna say b tier is like hey you're plenty good enough to make some ur only teams c tier would be worse than that and i'm not putting anybody into d okay let's go next next up is ayaka so we're sticking in alphabetical order and i'm actually gonna drop ayaka into a tier I think this might surprise some people. I am a big fan of Ayaka in the game right now. So let's talk about her strengths and her weaknesses a little bit. For her strengths, she has a very, very good heal in Kuraga that gets upgraded to Panacea. It has more range by one, but it's still more than Aerith's main heal does, and it restores AP. This is something that some of the newer supports in the game, like Velus, can do, and it's something that can actually turn the tide in a fight. If you're running especially a two-bruiser single support comp, and your support is also feeding AP to your bruisers, that's really strong. If, they, if it's a difference between them getting a another big ticket move off or having to auto attack that can absolutely win you a fight so i think this upgrade was very very important for ayaka she also has full life so i don't like that as much as re-raise but i do still like it it is still very valuable and if you're running her in one of these new like double bruiser double high damage unit with a support teams her divine melody buff is 30 defense pin with an absorb on it that's very good and that's good not just in modern no win teams. I think Ayaka is somebody who can very easily splash into multi-element teams. She's definitely not the best at that. We'll cover that later, but I think it's something she can do um, very well. If you go in her white mage sub, she has access to spells like protect and shell, which you can use to control her movement, right? If you want her to stand still, control her AI, you can turn these on. She also has time mage, a drawback for Ayaka. She does not have quicken. She just has haste and time mage, but this is another skill that you can use for those early turns. If you want her not moving up to let her heal the here. Here's the thing. The next thing I'm going to talk about, it's not, it's not Green Mage. Green Mage sucks. Um, it's not Green Mage. Her Limit Break, getting the second use is the thing that moved her from B to A, in my opinion. When I was initially making this list, I had her ranked right there with Aerith and B tier, but having two uses of a giant AoE heal like this is so nice. It also dispels stop, which I think could maybe see a little rise in value as we see more stop coming into the game, especially when Agrius gets here. So um, I think this will be one that is contested, in the comments, I think some people will say I'm wrong about this, but I think Ayaka is a very, very good mono support. Now, she's not bringing anything else. She's not here to do damage. Yes, she has Holy, but she is all in on supporting, gives you options for how she wants to do it. She's not the best at any of the things she does, but she's really good um, as a support, so I'm dropping her into that A tier. Bottom of A. She is the cut for A tier, in my opinion. Okay, next up is going to be Ildira. Now, Ildira is somebody who I'm going to rank... Hmm... Hold on. Let's look at her. I'm on the fence with Ildira. Let's go check out her skills. So if we're looking at her skills, one of Ildira's biggest strengths is that Arithmetician is a banger job. No casting time is monstrously good. Like, it's it's omega useful to not have casting time on your skills. So she has these, like, height-based curas that are super long range with super big AoEs. Yeah, I'm done thinking about it. She's A. Like, I, I don't know why I thought about making her worse than Ayaka. I just had a brain fart. She's, she's better than Ayaka. We're gonna put her above her A. So, Height 3 Curaga. This is an instant cast Curaga. It is one of the better healing spells in this game. It's huge range. Its AoE is as big as Ayaka's you know, limit break is, and it has four uses. 
Ooh, this is really good. Uh, but she, she can splash into non-mono water teams, but the backup thing that you're getting from Yildira is damage. Uh, Arithmeticians also do a ton of damage. You just saw my little Leela fight at the beginning of this video, and she's also bringing light-based magic as well in her kit. So when you're wanting to do damage, you have two options right there. She got height three resistivity. This is a pretty good buff. Like it's strike, pierce, and missile resist 50 percent in a ranged AoE buff. Really good in PvP if you're building to fight those teams. This is something you can sprinkle in. Otherwise, I think you have um, really good op. You can actually get her to disable people, by the way. If you know what you're doing with Ildira, you can get her to cast these disable spells as well. But the other thing that you're getting from her is slashing damage. Um, this is very useful for PvE comps as well. And then I want to shout out her limit break. A little CT manipulation can go a long way. She does bring that if you need your team to be a little bit faster. I don't think this skill is as good as it was like back in the day, right? It's uh, it's not AoE quicken, but it is AoE kind of quicken, right? It's AoE we're all going to go again pretty soon. I do like the spell. I do like the spell. Mostly, Ildira's biggest strengths are she has big AoEs, no casting time, which again, that's huge, um, and she does decent damage for you as well. Her hold back, what's holding her back? What's keeping her from that S tier? She does not seem to have a way of bringing people back to life. That's a big deal. Like, no re-raise that she can give out, no full life, so she's not gonna, like, if it goes real bad, she's not turning it around with a clutch full life on somebody, and that does suck, but Ildira is super usable, um, uh, she's almost like a main job damage dealer, she's probably like just above that cut line for people who should have been somewhere else, okay, next up is Lemire, now Lemire definitely wasn't getting put on a DPS tier list, but Lemire is really good, I'm gonna stick her into A tier, let's talk about her a little bit, so if we, and keep in mind, Lemire, in global does not have uh i mean like her master ability yeah i think there's an, you know she's no master ability two yet here so let's we'll continue so here's the deal with lemire right she has aoe haste hastage this is one of the better support spells in the game and people build entire mono dark teams around this um i think lemire can be used in rainbow teams but i think her niche her big strength is in a double bruiser double like high damage bruiser and it can be mages by the way there's there's great black mate or dark mages in the game right now and there's great dark physical units you pair two of them with lemire you have a move to her she hastes the whole group and that is a deadly combo especially considering she can back that up with then casting some quickens on them. So not only are they faster because of haste, but they might get three or four turns of chaining because she's there hasting them, dropping quickens. Lemure is really good, and this is a unit that not a lot of people thought would be great when she came out because she doesn't really do damage. Like, she has Meteor right here, right? She's got Comet, but they're elementalists. They're weak. Um, blah right? Okay, now, if we go down to her Scholar job, you can get a little bit more dark damage from here, but I think you're better off running her in White Mage, leading all into her healing. In this, she can bring some Curagas along for the ride, Curata along for the ride, so she has a really good AoE heal and a really good single target heal. This is awesome. You can also have her casting Protect and Shell if you're going specifically anti-physical or anti-magic, so I think you get no limit break that holds her back from being an s tier unit i also think she's stronger in mono element comps than not and again if you go to her uh if you go to her white mage job you won't see a uh, full life right here she has rays i i've seen people leave this on i've seen people turn it off rays has a very low chance of procking so i personally would not run this on lemire but i don't think her weaknesses like her lack of damage prevent her from being at least an a tier support so i'm going to slot her in here next to ildira in the a tier next up uh halloween little leela now halloween little leela i'm also going to put in a it would have been S. There was a time in this game when Halloween Little Leela might arguably have been one of the best units in the game. Like one of the actual top three units in War of the Visions. That time was like two Halloweens ago. She was busted back then. She's still really good today. Like she was, that is a testament to how strong she was back then. Two years later, she's still doing work. So let's talk about Halloween Little Leela's pluses and minuses. So the good things that Little Leela does, she's a main job arithmetician. We just talked about this, big AOEs, 
instant cast, healing, and damage. Really, really good. So what makes her better than Ildira? Because I do think Halloween Little Leela is a lot like Ildira, but a little bit better. Well, let me tell you what makes her better. If you go to her White Mage sub job, she has full life. It's great. That's really good. So you just run White Mage sub, and if it goes wrong, if she's been damaging people and your tank finally goes down, she could be like, oh, Joom, come back. You're full HP. Boom. This fight's a 3v2 or a 3v1. Having full life is the difference, in my opinion, between Ildira and Halloween Little Leela, and why I value Halloween Little Leela more, that's just busted. Ninja sub job, you're never going to run this, but it does give her some nice agility in her kit, and her limit break is also pretty good. Like, this dispel, there's a lot of haste in the game, there's a lot of buffs in the game, and if you turn this on and have it leveled up, she'll use it. The drawback to this limit break is the range is only three, so most of the time, Leela's going to keep herself relatively safe with her main job kit, dropping those Arrowagas, Meta Magic Arrowaga, where it's just like, like if there, if it's a multiple floor, this just wrecks people. Again, she also has that holy damage. Really, not a lot of weaknesses here for Halloween Little Leela, except that she's really squishy. So you kind of need a way of keeping her alive. Something like Zombie TMR, something like um, Black Rose Helena's TMR. Little Leela is the top of A tier for supports. I'm only putting one in S tier, and that's the best support in the game. So Little Leela almost, almost makes it in. There was a time. Now next up, Minwoo. I'm going to rank Minwoo under Aerith. I'm going to put her in B tier. I don't think Minwoo sucks. I think Minwoo's fine. But she's just not, like, great. She's a free, you know, free-ish unit. You can get her from Selection Quest. And she is pretty strong. Like, we'll take a look at what her kit brings. She's, um, her main job, uh, Devout is what it's called. This has really good buffs in it. Devout is known for being a very strong buffing job. If you look at Teachings of the Flame, which hers gets upgraded to Rites of the Flame, it is a single target buff, but 45 fire attack is very, very strong. Unfortunately, debuff resistance and activation time down are either situational or not very strong. Like, I don't love debuff resistance, and activation time down is really only good if you're putting it on a mage. And something that fire kind of runs into, especially that I've been discovering this the last few days, is the fire units just don't feel like they synergize super well to me. And I think Minwoo also suffers from that. She's kind of like a Resnick wannabe, in my opinion, but she was a, yo, know, she's technically a giveaway unit, I suppose. You do gotta earn her. Anyway, Teaching of the Flame gets upgraded. Now, Teaching of Self-Preservation, this is one of the core things of her kit. It's an AoE defense and spirit buff that increases her healing power. Very good. You're going to have this on in almost all situations. Law of Invigoration. This is another single target buff. It also gets upgraded for her. I think this is an insanely good skill. So agility, attack, magic, and a heal on this thing. So like her heal, her single target heal. Again, Minwoo's strengths are in single target things, in my opinion. One, two, three, four, five range is good. Three range height is good. And I've actually seen this spell turn around a fight. Now, it was Resnick who was casting it, so it was actually just this. But the agility buff from this, I saw it heal somebody, put them up in turn order, and then they won the fight on the next turn. Really, really good. I love Dream Inducer as well. Um, in these jobs, it's an AoE sleep 220% damage spell. Problem is, for um, for Devouts, is their AI is more focused on healing and supporting than it is on doing damage. So they have to be in a situation where they've both moved into range to hit somebody and there's nobody low. That holds all Devouts back a little bit because Dream Inducer is so good. And on paper, Ultima looks really OP. I've never seen it do anything worthwhile. Okay. Um, you know, you're probably not running Devout sub, Cleric sub sucks. If you go for Time Mage sub, she does have Quicken. I have found this very useful in, um, manual PvP situations where you can force your fire units to synergize because you can just make them do what you want them to do. And having Minwoo in there to set up a team and then follow it up with Quicken buffs, I do think is very good. Aerith can also do this. I just think the rest of Aerith's kit is a little bit better at doing what it does than Minwoo's is. Again, I don't think Minwoo is bad. Um, I think she's just B tier. None of the units on this list, like I said, I think are bad. That's, in my opinion, what the strengths and weaknesses of Minwoo are. Now, I mentioned Ms. Minwoo is like budget Resnick. I'm going to drop Resnick in here. Man, I, like, the debate for me is, is Resnick better or worse than Lemire? 
because I think Resnick is very good. Let's talk about why I think Resnick is really good. So if we come down here, she has main job, guess what? It's Devout, it's just like Minwoo's, but pay attention to what gets upgraded on this kit. So once again, the single target buff gets upgraded, but Resnick's, uh, the lightning attack doesn't get upgraded. Instead, it gets single target resist 25. This is more generically useful than Minwoo's buff. Minwoo's buff, yeah, 15 more fire attack is cool, especially if you're really trying to power up one person. This is a super good buff to have to apply to tanks. If you're running her with like double bruisers, she, in my opinion, is a much better rainbow support than Minwoo is. I don't think she's one of the best rainbow supports in the game, maybe, but she is better than Minwoo, who is the same job as her. I love single target resist and AoE resist in the game right now, so I put a little bit of love on that. She has teachings of, of self-preservation, which is really good. She has law of invigoration, which is that really good heal. Um, law of refuge. This is, again, a different between her and Minwoo. Minwoo had Ultima right here. Law of Refuge is a 50% physical damage shield and a hate debuff for Resnick, which again is very useful. If you're running Resnick with like um, Esther Abara or Esther Cloud or something like that, where they're not out there pulling aggro, so you don't want your Resnick to get sniped, she can give one of them a shield, Cloud in this case, because, you know, Abara, or Oh, everybody's a bara. Yo, know, uh, Esther could do it for herself. And then she's also dropping her hate. So let your fighters go fight. This sets her up better to back them up. I really like it. She also has arithmetician for those instant cast damage and healing skills. You'll never run thief. And then she has a limit break. Minwoo doesn't have a limit break. That holds her back. And this limit break is very good. It is like Ayaka's, right? It doesn't have the same range as Ayaka, but it hits in that big old AoE. It also buffs attack and magic 40% in a big time AoE, so bails out your low HP units, they're stronger on their next turn. Resnick is a very, very good support unit. Uh, she's not bringing a ton of damage to back that up. In fact, in a lot of situations, <laughs> after Resnick's team dies, she sometimes does not have heals or anything besides healing and buffing on, so just sit there and buff herself. I've seen it happen. It's unfortunate. That's Resnick. Okay, next up is Rosa. I'm going to stick Rosa towards the top of B tier up here with Aerith. Let's put her like... Let's put her like right there. I think Rosa is an often slept on unit. Admittedly, she's not a unit that I've ever used. Um, I think I pulled her and she's like level one or I never pulled her. I don't remember, but she does not have her master ability two yet. Keep that in mind. So if you want to run her in a mono element group, she's not buffing that team just by being there. That does hold her back right now. It won't someday, but it does hold her back right now. Um, she has reflex. This is really nice. She just run reflex on her. So that's, that's a bonus. Her main job is unique to her. Uh, what's it? What priestess? So well, let me get the name right. White Mage of Baron. I knew the word Baron was in there. Um, it is a mainly healing job. If we look at the heals, Righteous Prayer is uh, a spirit buff. I'm sorry, we're going to look at the heals first. Divine Prayer is a single target heal that also grants shell. That's pretty useful, especially against anti-magic teams. That's nice. Righteous Prayer is an AoE spirit buff that increases her healing power while also nullifying some uh, potentially big stats effects. Confusion stop in the game. Frostbite kind of made a comeback. Disable and stun are all over the place. This is a very good buff. Pure Prayer's upgrade. Uh, the Righteous Prayer. This is strong. So I like that a lot. She has Holy for some 100% hit. She has some wind or some ice missile moves and she has full life. But if we're looking at this, if we're looking for her to do her support job, the only heal in her main kit is Prey, which gets upgraded to Divine Prayer. It's nice, but it's only single target. So if you want AOE healing from Rosa, you have to go down to a White Mage and get Kuraga. That's fine. Um, you can do that, but Kiraga by itself is not going to like boost you up a ton in my opinion. Nice that you have the option for it. Her limit break is also an AOE heal. The drawback to it is you have to go stand next to people. You really don't want your support standing next to people. She moves in though, and she does give a nice 310% heal with AP increase and it heals herself as well. So that's Rosa. Um, I would be open to critique on this one as well because of all of these units this is the one that I have the least experience with it's the one I see the least and it's the one I've never really played with myself that's just my feeling on her I feel like she's a mid B tier support in the game now next up Velus. here's the king Velus is the guy 
I think Velus is insanely good right now. We just ran a like mixed element. Like you had to run rainbow teams last week and the teams that went to ice and got Velus and then mixed them with two other elements, they had a lot of success. They had a lot of success. Let's talk about why they had success. And with Velus, it all starts right about here. Stars of Swiftness. This haste spell gives haste to the target and haste to Velus. It is not as good as Lemire's. Lemire has, Lemire can haste her entire team in one cast, which is busted. This is almost as good. In two turns, Velus will have hasted his whole team while also having refreshed his own haste, which will help him um, get back to either hasting or healing later. Snow healing though, this is also the bread and butter for Velus. His main heal is a big AoE, again, like Ayaka's Limit Break Big, that also restores 15 AP. I talked about earlier how powerful a heal that restores AP is. Um, again, I've seen this win fights by itself. I've seen Velus hard carry teams to victories. That's insane. Also, Velus's damage, if he's allowed to do it, is really good. And if you're talking about controlling his movement, he does have access to a really nice single target buff that gives him Protect and Shell. If you want him to just hold back for one more turn and you don't want to commit a TMR to do that. Now, if we look at what else he's bringing, you can opt in for some more damage right here in the Scholar sub job, or you can opt in to instant cast abilities. He has Arithmetician, which again, I think is just a busted job. I love Arithmetician. In Instant cast is insanely good, and his limit break is 100% hitter with a nice range. So if you need, you know, it gives him access to at least one plus 100% hit move. If you're fighting evasion teams and you're relying on the rest of your team to get it done, this does give Bellus sometimes that there's that awkward point in the middle of a fight where he's hasted everybody, but nobody's really taking damage, so he's going to try to look to do DPS. If you're fighting evade, he has access to this, and then after he's done that, typically people have taken damage, so he can go back to doing his main job healing. I think he is the best support in the game right now. Uh, if he had a weakness, if I was going to chalk a weakness up to Velus, where is his come back to life spell? He really doesn't have one of those. If you want re-raise in your group or courage or something like that, you're going to find that from TMRs or from other people's kit, but that is not enough of a drawback to keep him from the number one spot, in my opinion. Okay, we have one UR support left to talk about, and that's Yuna. Yuna was also, like Halloween Little Leela, Yuna also used to be the, like, queen of supports, but I, like, right now, guys, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, something like this, something like this, Yuna's in that, like, Lemire Resnick power category, I think she's easier to use than they are. Yuna's a brain dead champion. This is something I just talked about before. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Okay. So Yuna's a champ. You throw her in and you're like, Yuna, just go do Yuna things. Drop your 100% hits, do some healing, do some buffing. And she's pretty dang good at those things. Um, however, if you're talking about the other characters on this list that she's around, like Lemire and Resnick, if set up properly, I think Lemurian and Resnick can either be as good or better than her. Okay, back to Yuna's kit. She does have an instant cast heal in her main job, Prey, but she has to get close to use it. So uh, I give her props for having the instant cast, but real big drawback because she might just get one shot if she's hanging up there by your tank. Sonic Wings is a nice move with some CT decrease for damage. She has Curaga. She has Holy, so there's some 100% hit stuff. And her Holy, especially if you're fighting Dark, it's like a truck. That 25 extra dart killer on there is very, very nice. Okay, she has re-raise and full life. This is the strength of Yuna. This is her biggest strength. She can give re-raise to somebody in your group or herself, and if they die and are really dead, she has a chance to bring them back with full life. This makes Yuna teams super annoying to fight if she is allowed to do this. Again, the problem with full life, and the reason I kind of like re-raise more than full life, is, okay, somebody's dead, Yuna walks up, she's going to attempt to full life them. She's sitting there channeling the spell, the enemy Abara, it's me, let's say it's Abara, gets a turn, and Abara uses, you know, some Abara magic and kills Yuna, the full life's never going off. Even if Yuna had given re-raise to herself, the, ca the cast will be cancelled, she'll come back to life, but then the other Abara is going to kill her. So, I think this is really strong, just not as strong as it used to be, in my opinion. Green Mage sucks, 
Coated Dama Wielder is nice to have because it does give her access to a big AoE damage spell and another 100% hit chance move if you need it. Um, most of the time, you like the nimble movement from Coated Dama Wielder because if you've had your unit kind of chilling in the back, this will let her cast this on herself, giving her another turn to chill in the back, but also ensuring that after she's ready to go engage, she will have the movement and jump to go do so. And then y'all know Space Chicken, Valifor's here. So just sort of like Velis, she has a limit break that has a nice range, hits it in an AoE, and gives her something to do from range against evasion teams or anybody else. The Space Chicken is really strong. Now, I did put Fina on this list somehow twice. I think Fina honestly duplicated when I shrunk the screen. I think when I shrunk it, Fina became two Finas and it corrupted everything. But this is the world we live in. Now, I'm going to put Fina into B tier. Now look, here's the deal. Fina's real good. And in cost-limited situations, I think Fina is the queen of cost-limited MR supports. 60 cost is not a lot cheaper than you are, but it's it's cheaper. It's cheaper. It's at least 10 cheaper than the 70 cost ones. Her master ability too, which you just got, is really good. And if we look at her skills, she has really good things in her kit. Wow, that was... Uh, you can tell I'm tired. That was really descriptive. I said she has really good things. Sparkle Shower is kind of a backup thing that Fina can bring where she's decreasing accuracy. As a light unit, I think Fina is very good in cost-limited light teams. She can provide her support, which again is her main thing, Curaga, which upgrades to superior healing. It's not the best upgrade, but it does remove slow, stop, doom, and charm, so it's useful. Um, and she has full life, so that's where you're getting your support there. But Sparkle Shower gives a big ranged accuracy debuff, which if you're running an evasion team and Fina Sparkle Showers them, minus 43 accuracy, they better be bringing some 100% hit stuff or they're going to be missing. So really strong here. Um, and the big upgrade to her Kiraga is obviously the, the, the range, right? The, the AOE size gets really big, so that's really nice. Now, if you go to her White Mage of Lapis subjob, she does have access to cheer. Definitely something that Fina is also used for is Raising Faith. She's somebody who you can put in a squad to cast a Faith buff on an ally to boost their Faith permanently. That's really useful, but it's also a good buff. Protect with an attack and magic steroid on it is nice. That's nice. It's something for Fina to do on those early turns. If she's not in range to do damage or nobody's taking damage and needs a heal, that's pretty cool. If we look at the rest of her job, you're never going to run Gunner because she's a magic unit. This is an attack damage job. Cleric sucks and she doesn't have a limit break. So even though all the rest of this is really strong, you can kind of see how she falls off once you get deeper into her kit, um, but she's still very good for an MR, and in my opinion, kind of the queen of MR. So let's put her on there twice, just for, you know, for doing it. So here's my ranking. If I'm going through here and ranking them one through Fina, I'm going Velis as the king, um, followed up by Halloween Little Leela, Lemire, especially Lemire in Mono Dark Comps. I just think, like, I'm talking impact on the game right now, and I just think Lemire's impact on the game is big time. Uh, Yuna, Resnick, Ildira, Ayaka, round out A, and then I go B tier with Aerith, Rosa, Minwu, and then Fina, and then we'll just say the rest of MRs follow somewhere down the line after Fina. I want to talk about the top of this list. If I want to do it, I, I could do a video over like cost limited support options, go through uh, everything below Fina. Maybe put Fina in S and then go down from there. If you want that, let me know in the comments. If you disagree with where I put anybody, please let me know in the comments. Or also let me know that in the comments section. Um, yeah, there it is, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and Friday Night Fights tonight. If you're watching this Friday morning, we got the draft tonight. So make sure to tune in for that and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.